All right, we're doing a little shop tour. We've got a lot of stuff going on with a lot of cars. Right now, I think we have 29 cars in the building, actually, so we got a few things to go over. We'll start out here on the Viking. Lots of progress on this. Uh, the problem is it's like the last 10% is the last 90%, so we're trying to wrap up the bed, all the details on that, get the little fender lips done. We're also trying to fit the brakes from Little Shop Manufacturing. By the way, really nice product. Uh, check these things out. These are huge, giant Willwoods. I mean, dude, that's just huge. Pretty awesome. Uh, on some even bigger rotors. I think those are about 16-inch uh, custom hubs from LS. Uh, these things are awesome. Highly recommended. Good go-to company. Um, we've also taken care of a bunch of small stuff in this cab. Right now, we're trying to fit stuff for the Dakota Digital Units. Uh, cruise control, which is kind of hard to do with a diesel because it requires a separate tack drive off the alternator. So there's a lot of forethought and process in that. Dash is pretty much buttoned up. Uh, seats, you can see here sitting on the bed, those are buttoned up, ready to go back in. So we're in the middle of doing a bunch of small bracket design and small stuff on that. Under the hood, not a whole lot has changed since we showed it last. We're just buttoning up small stuff. So We've, uh, you know, built some bracket mounts and things, and that's pretty much it on that. Broncos had a lot of stuff going on, too. Lots of little stuff, like just getting the gaps right, fender to hood. Uh, the grill was completely misshaped, so we had to reshape all of that to actually fit properly. Um, under the hood, we actually are in the middle of trying to do some work around the battery tray, trying to design some covers and some panels. Um, the actual hood itself didn't fit good, so we've had to gap that so that it doesn't touch when you open the hood. Uh, the dashboard, we've got a couple things laid out on the dash there. Uh, we're doing a push button start. We have, as you can see, our low car shifter, our sport shifter for the 6R80 that's in it. We have a GM tilt column going into, and we got a set of Dakota digital gauges. We've actually moved to the center of the dashboard, kind of more aesthetically pleasing, a little different, but still nice. This one here should be a whole YouTube feature in itself, all the mess we've had to clean up on this. Uh, if you haven't seen the prior videos, go check them out. Uh, this is the one we're trying to cut and clean up all the messy welding. So we've actually had to build some notches. We had to square up the frame. Uh, as a matter of fact, the frame rails, when we pulled the bed off, that rail was half of an inch lower than the rest. And this rail was actually twisted in and then they welded it together. So what we're doing here is we built a different set of notches, a little longer, a little taller, and we're building our brackets and our gussets and we're boxing in some of this frame now that way we have something good and solid to build our airbag brackets off of which is what's coming next you see our uh, three link system our wishbone that's working out pretty well and then in the middle we're gonna have to build our drive shaft clearance because that's obviously going to be in the way of the shaft the uh, wayman mustang here this poor thing uh, again there's more video on this this is the one that had all the filler and the quarter panel on the right side that it was made out of. So what we're doing now is like a full deconstruction of this car. Uh, we're doing a roaster shop chassis on this. We're doing a brand new Ford Performance Coyote motor. We're also doing a transmission from Bowler, a 6B, one of the carbon units. So a lot of this stuff is going to go away. It's like the towers are going to go away, all the suspension and steering. We're just getting rid of all that stuff. The customer has somebody who wants it. We're going to sandblast the body after we do some stripping on the roof. Uh, kind of see what we have left. We already know we're replacing a great deal of this car, like the floors, wheel tubs, all that stuff's going to be custom fit to that RS chassis. So not much of it do we need. So we'll cut away a lot of what we don't need. So when we blast it, we're not just senselessly blasting panels. <clears throat> Where's that? All right, one C10, we got quite a few things going on. We've done a lot too, so the cab has new doors. Uh, we're actually gonna be doing the dash panel soon. Uh, new floor has been done as well. This is a roaster shop chassis as well. GM Performance LS3, six speed auto, went good drivability out of this truck. So on the back here, you can see quite a lot of cuts where we're actually opening up the fender for height so we can fit the big meats under the backside. And we got some big ones. So the goal here is that we want to have enough clearance, as you can see in the bedside, for us to fit with it all the way down. 
but we also didn't want it to have to come too far in. We've only got about that much tire coming inside, so it fits real nice and real good. This one is one of those, be careful where you take your car, do some research, ask more questions. I have no problem being interviewed for a job, if you will. Uh, definitely look at reviews, talk to other customers. Um, all my customers are more than happy for you to talk to them personally, but this poor car. So this was at a different shop here in Colorado Springs. Uh, you can see the condition of it. I mean, you've got holes like, look at this floor. Big holes in this car all over the floor. All the inners, outers, the rockers. I mean, you can see how it's cut off already. This is how we'd receive the car, just like this. So admittedly, this car has been in a few car wrecks in its past. You can see that caved in here on the cowl section. I don't have a problem with that kind of stuff. We can take care of it, but the other shop only sold her a new wiring harness and a clutch. It's kind of backwards. Um, we're going to do all the metal fab and get everything put together with the body first and fit well before we talk about a wiring harness. But you can see here in the filler just how thick some of this mess is. It's, again, been repaired poorly. She was aware of some of it. They had cut things off the car, but they hadn't done anything with it. So we'll cut off like the quarters. Uh, we'll remove some of that stuff, and then we'll get it sandblasted. And then that way we have a fresh start to make a new, nice new 1968 Camaro, basically. Uh, get rid of the, you know, flapping gums, I guess you can call it. Again, the Willis here, we've got a whole bunch more progress on the quarter. Um, so if you remember when we left off, we had built the other side. Nate's been busting his butt on it. This side here, we're doing the same, just kind of mirror. So it's, it's cool to build one piece, but when you're trying to build two that match, that's where it really comes in, that you're trying to use the same process. Sometimes it's easier because you already had practice on one side, but in this case, you know, you got different shapes on different sides, so it's just a little more involved to make sure it's as good as possible. So with the same wheel opening, beads all fit real nice. Everything's fitting really good on this section, so good job, Nate. He's also working on this one here, so this one's been kind of interesting because you cram a thousand horsepower into a car, you got a couple things to consider. Yeah, you want tires so it sticks, you want brakes so it stops, but you also got a lot of cooling. In this one, we have a supercharger cooler, which we have kind of a cardboard template mocked up in the back of where we think we might want to fit that. But we've also got the radiator that's got to fit. Both coolers, you can see one of them here. We have another one under this side with a matching duct that goes over it. We're also trying to design the air filter into a pocket here to keep cold air, keep it out of the engine bay, that way it runs better. We're also trying to figure out how to like kind of cover the hydro boost unit, which it's probably the best thing for this car, for the package it's got, in our opinion. Um, and then you can see all the small stuff he's got going on here, like he's trying to fill in or finish the hood latch holes. Um, he's trying to finish where the radiator cap goes and things of that nature. So, like I said, the last 10% is the last 90%. You can get the whole car put together, but we're probably going to have, you know, weeks worth of work under this hood, including the hood, to actually clearance this monster motor. We've actually had to cut the cow or the uh, section and move it forward. So in the K10 here, where we left off, was we were gapping and fitting the hood. We've got all that done. Everything fits really good using our gap gauges to line that out with. What we do in Metal Fab is we will fit everything right down to the trim, which is kind of what you have going on here. We want to know where the holes go before we paint it. Nothing worse than drilling a hole th through a painted through a project, I swear. So we'll fit all these pieces here. We've noticed a couple things we've had to tweak, especially on the tailgate section. Stuff that didn't fit right, wasn't shaped right. I'd rather do that now and make it fit and get all the holes in place well before we go to painter body. Okay, the 73 Blazer here. You'll see the body here in a minute as we continue through the shop. I uh, decided we would change some things up, so we're going to run a blueprint, a uh, four-inch stroker in it. We're doing a TCI 700R4, but to adapt it, it requires this little space from advanced adapters. What that adds though, what Chris is doing, is actually relocating the trans for a case shifter. So we had to move it back forward to make up for that spacer and up for clearance around the transmission. So now we got to extend that, we got to get it welded, then we got to extend the rods on top of it. So it's never a little thing just putting something on a car. So we mean there's a lot of mock up involved and a lot of fitment. From here, after he gets that done, this chassis starts coming apart. So we can sandblast stuff like the core support, the frame, we'll get everything powder coated. We'll do a mixture of satin black and gloss black on the bottom side. 
Um, that's pretty much the theme of the chassis and suspension is just black but different mixtures. All right, so the 66 Chrysler here, we are in the middle of actually kind of hitting pause while we get our assembly room assembled, ironically. This is ready to go on the frame, uh, turn it into a roller, get the engine in it, and start assembling and wiring the inside. So we have a painless wiring harness that's got to go in. We got Dakota Digital Gauges. We had them build us this custom cluster that's got to go in. So we're not probably not even halfway with this car, honestly. Jeremy Luna's Camaro has started some uh, controversy, we'll say, over the use of body filler. People seem to think we're like building a car out of it when really, if you look at our videos, we're like maybe three sheets of paper thick. We don't believe in using primer as a filler, it shrinks back. So long story short, we've gotten through the body process, we're now doing jams. Uh, we're ready to partially assemble the car, at least loosely, so we can spray the red. This particular red is super sensitive. When we did the spray out cards, one coat difference or a dry time difference, the red looked completely different. And it's not even a metallic, it's a solid. So to play it safe in RM, we're gonna loosely assemble this and spray all the red at one time uh, and then take it back apart, resand it. Later, after it's completely assembled, we have to do black stripes on it so then it'll come apart again. Interesting process, but it takes a lot to get it done right. Body for the blazer. Hunter's over here is getting ready to do some direct metal seam sealer. We're seam sealing both sides. And then we're actually going to spray a Raptor bed coating on both sides, keep that nice and durable. Uh, the wheel wells come out, trans tunnel comes out, so that helps a lot on a small one like this. You can even see the temporary bracing we welded in during this process so we don't fold the truck in half. You might remember this is actually broken in half right here. So we're trying to make sure we don't mess up all the hard work we did to put it back together. Another uh, filler happy truck. <laughs> so this one also started a lot of controversy. Uh, we're actually quite a long ways on this. We've got a couple spots we want to spot prime to be done with the body stage on the outside. Then we're going to take it apart, start doing the jams, the dash, the inside of the doors, things like that. Um, thinking we might be spraying this green. We're still seeing what we're going to do. Meanwhile, the vet over here, we've come a long ways on this. Uh, we're actually in the last stages, just blocking out the primer now. And then same thing, we'll blow it apart and start doing the jam work and get it cleaned up. And then it goes on a rotisserie because we still have to finish the bottom of the floor. All right, so this little thing here, as little as it is, it's been quite the headache trying to find parts and pieces for it. So we'll find something missing and then it takes like three weeks to get it. So it's been pretty interesting of just making notable progress. Again, the, I keep saying it, but the last 10% is the last 90%. We literally just have to finish assembling this car get it tuned, running, driving, and she's ready to go home. So with our mechanical area, we do a lot of inspections. When they first come in, we wanna know what we're dealing with. We want you to know what we're dealing with. We wanna make sure that what you want goes with the truck. Uh, this one's a good example. So there's a bunch of things he wants to do like engine work, transmission work, electrical. However, when you get up underneath this bad boy, there are holes about that big in the bottom of the car. Um, his budget is limited. That's a big problem because you can't really see it well on the camera. This thing's got ghost flames and he wants to keep that as well as make the repair and blend it to match. That is asking a monumental task. So you have to have, got to be budget understanding, not budget friendly, but budget understanding that that takes a lot of work to make that happen. A lot of times with custom paint, you end up just repainting stuff strictly because of the match. Again, this flame is real hard to see, but it comes all the way back here into this quarter and now I'm painting down here and hoping I can blend before I get to those flames. That's real hard to pull off. We get a lot of weird, like little cool stuff. I mean, little, this thing is small, look at that. It's like a matchbox car. My hand is literally as big as the brakes on this little thing. So this is under one of those inspections we're doing. Uh, he'd like to do some kind of partial resto or full resto on it. And he wants to know what we're getting into. A couple things we have found already is like literally using a copper line for a brake line. We got brake hoses that are not secured completely. Uh, we got a lot of dents and stuff on the bottom. There's some rust coming through. It's kind of minor. It's actually pretty decent car from what we can tell so far. But again, now we can get under it, we can look, and I can give you feedback on what it is we're trying to do. The inspections is the best way to do that. All right, so we always have a lot going on in the shop. I mean, like I said, we've got usually 32 to 36 cars at any given time. 
Uh, we have a full fab department all the time. Uh, right now we're about to have assemblies, about to have four cars in it at one time. All of them are pretty high-end show cars in our caliber. Uh, mechanical department's always rocking and rolling. We're always hiring for mechanics. Let me know if you're looking for a job. <laughs> Other than that, uh, just keep following along. We've got a lot of stuff going on.